The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Must have soup. The pancake is to die for. <laughs> it was a gut bomb, but I liked it. Good. I actually fantasize in private moments about the food I had. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? <laughs> oh, okay. Dining here makes me feel rich. And what about dessert? Pecan pie, sweet potato pie. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, travel writer Kathy Leong journeys far and wide in search of adventure, a new experience, and the perfect cut of beef. She doesn't mince her words when she visits restaurants around the world and expects only the best from her luxurious spot. And sales executive Ross Ritterman values the community as well as the southern French cooking with Spanish flair at his unusual location. He also loves a bargain. And with soup and salad included in the entree price, you just can't go wrong. But first, legal administrator Vivian Stone breaks all the rules at her warm, cozy rendezvous. The tasty dishes, hand-painted walls, and small, narrow floor plan invites indulging and a little belt loosening. But it's worth it. Vivian's place is on Clement Street in San Francisco, and it's called Mescalanza Restaurant. 21 years ago, um, we opened this place up. Um, I was working for the Piccinini families. Um, then they uh, sold the place about 11 years ago. I bought the place and ever since I've been running Mescolanza. In our menu, uh, we have a regular menu which is kind of extensive, but I improved it and I added more things to it. And uh, everything is made to order, so it takes a little bit more time, but everything is fresh. The most exciting part of, uh, of the cooking is when I make the gnocchi. Since I do the gnocchi myself, um, I have three kinds of gnocchi spinach, sweet potato, and a regular gnocchi. And I use fresh, rusted potatoes. The way it works, Mescolanza, in the early part of the evening, we had a lot of families that come in with kids, they enjoy themselves, and they have fun. And then, later on in the evening, um, we had our professionals that come in, they have a nice glass of wine, and they stay longer. And, and so it's a very romantic place, and they just enjoy themselves. Now, Vivian, you've been going to this restaurant, which is out in the Richmond, for 20 years? Absolutely. <laughs> and why is it your favorite? You have to understand, between 1st Avenue and 25th Avenue, there must be over 100 restaurants there. Mm -hmm. We're known as kind of the ghetto gourmet alley. <laughs> yeah. And growing up in Germany and growing up and spending a lot of time in Europe as a child, right. Italian food in America is very different than it is in Italy or in Europe, per se. And one of the reasons I've always really liked Mescalanza is that it reminds me of the food back home. And when I go there, it even the, the color of the restaurant, the kind of scrappiness of some very of the waiters. Very muted, very right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just reminds me of Europe, and mm -hmm. so I really enjoy it. And I like that it's small. Oh, it's really small. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. only seats about 49 yeah. people. Right. And what did you have when you went? My favorite is the pear pizza. Mm -hmm. Now, most people say, <laughs> Pear pizza? I don't think so. But it's delicious. Right. And it has it's a very subtle. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, a mix of mozzarella and feta cheese. And then mm -hmm. melted on top of that is a little bit of sauce. And they have very thinly sliced pears and very thinly sliced prosciutto with some fresh basil. Right. Mm. It sounds like a nice balance of flavors. It, it, it yes. really is. And the crust is crackery? Or yes, is it, it's is crackery it? okay. but pillowy at the same time mm -hmm. is the only way I know how to describe <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. And certainly pizzas are a star there, aren't they? Yes. The pizzas are a star. Yeah. Did you have pizza? No, Kathy? we started with the carpaccio. I think they really shine mm -hmm. with their appetizers. The carpaccio with the, um, the raw beef and slices of um, fresh Parmesan cheese shaved just so the presentation was fantastic and you know, I wanted to get more. We're sharing this thing, yeah. and uh, you know, I wanted more, and he wanted more, and so it was. Um, we were delighted. Really. I'm so glad you love the carpaccio. That is one of my favorite, favorite dishes over there. 
We try to do it as European style as possible. Having been to Italy a few years ago, I noticed how they like to spread out the courses. And you know, there I am asking for my check, and they're like, yeah, take, <laughs> take, take your time. That's how they do it in, in, in Europe, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. That's right. So um, we started with this eggplant with pesto and tomato sauce pizza, which, by the way, I thought was, was incredible. Right. Um, other appetizer was the uh, sweet potato gnocchi with a, with a cream sauce. Mm. Um, I uh, previously had read online that a lot of people like that dish. Um, I like the fact that the gnocchi were definitely homemade. The quality was there. I thought the cream sauce sort of drowned out the flavor of the sweet potatoes because mm -hmm. I, I like my the, the sweet potato flavor. Right. The other dish was the chicken valdostana, was absolutely terrific. Mm. Um, I'd never had that dish before. Um, it's basically, for me cobbling it together, it was chicken marsala with salt and boca sort of rolled, right. in, rolled into one. Mm -hmm. So you get that sweet marsala wine sauce with the, with the saltiness of the prosciutto with some nice mozzarella cheese on top. Um, absolutely terrific. And you were licking your plate yeah. too. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I was a little disappointed in my main dish, so I tried everyone else's dish. Is what you do when you go out to eat. Right. Uh, mine was a spinach pasta with um, chicken and um, tomato sauce, and the tomato sauce didn't hold up to the pasta, and it was a little weak, a little. It wasn't bold enough. Mm -hmm. um, but my husband ordered um, the pesto linguine with pine nuts and basil, and that was just, uh, my fork just kept going over there. It was so Vivian's over here like shaking. <laughs> it was so it was good. good. It was fresh, it was mm -hmm. flavorful, it wasn't too heavy. He ate everything, and when you have pesto and cream sauce, it could be really yeah. like a brick in your stomach, but mm. it was just so flavorful that he, he almost licked the plate. It was that good, <laughs> it was that good. Oh, that's good. Did mm -hmm. you feel like you got big servings and, and good value uh, when you were there? Uh, absolutely. I think so. Yeah. The prices are, t are absolutely terrific for the amount of food that we got. And even mm -hmm. service-wise, uh, very, you know, attentive enough. You know, I don't think anybody likes to be smothered, but nobody likes to be neglected, and there was a nice, right. there was a nice balance there. Um, I like what you said about the scrappiness of the waiter, yes. because um, <laughs> we had one gentleman who just, I just couldn't connect with the waiter, but um, that was okay, you know, yeah. that was okay. He well, was, again, that's very European. It was um, a very warm environment, it, it was. I felt. Yeah, it was that's very clean like neighborhood. Uh, but it was very pretty. I, I it just, was. Yes. It was the nice murals on the wall, not overdone. Yes. Um, you know, there weren't cherubs flying around. I mean, it was just, <laughs> fresh flowers, little bud roses on your table, and the tables were apart far enough so that you could talk and you could walk in between. It wasn't right. packed. Right. It wasn't crowded and dense. It's Not a small all. place, too. But you have to make sure to make a reservation if you're planning yeah. on going at a mm -hmm. busy time and be aware of the parking situation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and so glad you enjoyed Vivian, it. Vivian, this you? is your spot, <laughs> so um, it seemed everybody enjoyed their experience. Give a quick wrap up. I would say if you're looking for a restaurant that is um, well-priced, excellent, food, excellent quality, great presentation, lovely interior, come to Mescalanza. All right, and Kathy? I think it's a great neighborhood place, and I'll be back, it's worth the drive. Oh, good. <laughs> and what about you, Ross? Uh, I always think it's great that there's a, that good Italian food exists outside of North Beach, and this is absolutely one of those places. Uh, high quality food, great service, uh, cozy, um, great find out in the Richmond. All right. If you would like to try Mescalanza Restaurant, it's on Clement Street near 23rd Avenue in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-668-2221. It's open for dinner every day. Reservations are recommended. And the average tab per person without drinks is around $30. Not your traditional restaurant space, you can learn to speak Basque, watch a movie, even pick up a game of pelota, all at the same location. And what better way to build up your appetite? Ross's pick is on Railroad Avenue in South San Francisco. It's the restaurant in the Basque Cultural Center. Uh, the Basque Cultural Center started because of a uh, publicly owned handball court that was in North Beach was going to be torn down and so the members to continue the tradition they decided to purchase uh, a property of their own and in 1979 this property was purchased. The restaurant was an afterthought which later evolved to be very successful and now supports all the member activities and cultural uh, events. 
We bring in the players from the best country and musicians for the best country. Here at the Basque Cultural Center, we serve a traditional food with a fresh ingredient, mostly a lot of, of lamb. Or we have the lamb stew on Sunday, we have the leg of lamb on Friday, and we have a rack of lamb with a la carte. The traditional Basque cooking, we use onions, garlic, and also a little bit of the uh, piment d'Espelette. I am from Basque heritage. My parents came here, so I'm first generation Basque American. I've been here 13 years at the Basque Cultural Center, and I took that opportunity thinking that I was going to be playing pilota again, but I've been busy with the restaurants, been very successful, so <laughs> there's no time for playing pilota. All right, Ross, you're not Basque. I mean, how did you find this spot? I, I'm, I'm not, but um, you know, I, I, I uh, had heard about it doing a little, doing a little research, and um, my, my girlfriend had actually studied in Spain, and so uh, this, we sort of gravitated uh, toward this place. Right. And uh, my, my boss at work is actually Basque, and he was pretty pleased to hear that I'd be uh, reviewing this restaurant. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us about it, because it isn't a, a, a traditional place that we would yeah. think of going. Yeah, you're not going to walk down the street and just see this place and be like, oh, yeah. this looks good, let's stop in. It's in the um, middle of a neighborhood. It's in the middle yeah. of a neighborhood and sort yeah. of in the industrial area of, um, of South San Francisco. So you need to sort of know to be looking for it. Just traditional family style food. Um, I believe a lot of the people working there are volunteers for the center. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the greatest things I think about this place is that because it's in support of the activities of the center, they're not going to necessarily stiff you on the prices. Right. And I think you'll see that with pretty much everything on the menu. Um, the wine list, there's virtually no markup. Right. So Basque has a unique culture. Right. It's a bit of that southern France <coughs> as it's mm -hmm. on the border of, of France and Spain, right. you know, that Spanish flair, but with, with southern French influence. And you get that in exactly. the cooking, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. You, you really get that sense of, of, of family, that this is a, a place where, you know, it's a, it's a great place for, to have a group, to sit down, have some, have some good, some hearty food. Right. Um, did you go with the group, Vivian? Actually, I did. My, <laughs> my two very first friends that I made ever in San Francisco took me out for my birthday. And they never birthday, been. Happy birthday, toast to Vivian. Yeah. Oh, Happy well, birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 29 decided, again. Oh, you, for the third time. <laughs> I decided that uh, I was going to celebrate my birthday in the month of December and, and use all the restaurants <laughs> and have all my friends take me. So it actually worked out really yeah, nice. That was great. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> and we had a ball at that place. Excellent. What, what did you have? You know, we had a little bit of everything. We had to have some appetizers. That's the way to do it. Yes. Yep. Or a lot of yeah. it of everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, mm -hmm. at that place, yes. We had the um, escargot for the appetizers mm. and the prosciutto and melon. Nice. Mm -hmm. And we had the um, family style dinner. So we had the lamb and the prime rib. Nice. <gasps> it was so flavorful and so tender without being too raw. Mm -hmm. which I don't mm -hmm. like. Right. And lamb, honestly, I, I normally don't like lamb, but I decided because it smelled so good when it passed by me to go to another table, I said, oh, I have to try Give some of this. Right. Yeah. And I was shocked. It was so delicious. It didn't taste gamey at all. Mm -hmm. It was very soft. They had like a little saucer of it that came separately from the prime rib. Right. It was delicious. They have a daily special, which mm -hmm. I thought is kind of nice because a lot of restaurants don't have that anymore. So it kind of reminded me of kind of growing up, going to mm -hmm. an, a neighborhood type of place where you had the daily special. Right. right. And they were very reasonably priced. All of them were less than 25. You get soup, you get um, super salad, you get your main dish, and, two and then entrees. different soups all the time. So Good you're enough. always yes. getting a new soup and yeah. you know, bring That's lots right. of soups to the table. Right. It was wonderful. Ours the soup was, was they great. had soup and salad and the entree and dessert. Okay, I'll for like $19. That. It was very right. reasonable. And I had the oxtail stew, mm. and it came out, it was great, but the soup was cauliflower soup. I don't normally like cauliflower, but it was so good. Yeah. It, was, it was just excellent. The thing that just kind of threw me a little bit was the ambiance. Um, I take my kids every year to sing at a rest home, and it kind of reminded me of upscale rest home mm -hmm. with the <laughs> pastel colors on right. the wall and right. little gilded, gold gilded pictures of peasants doing their daily jobs and this bright red, carpeting on the right. ground. Um, so, and then when I came in, it was 5.30, and we wanted to sit by the window, and there was no one there. Right. And she said, no. Really? And I said, well, <laughs> can we sit 
th but th it's not crowded. She goes, no, we, we can't. Mm. And I said, okay, that, that's fine. <laughs> so I didn't really understand that. Um, but the service was great. Maybe they're um, reserving it for the Basque contingent. I, I guess so. I guess so. But, you, you know, I, I had to get over the fact I'm not coming here for the ambiance. I'm coming here for the food. Because the plates were just your know, institutional white solid plates, sure. but the food was great. The oxtail stew, the meat fell off the bone, it, the side dishes were wonderful. Um, my friend had the lamb, which she loved, mm -hmm. and she felt the vegetables were a little too buttery for mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. For me, it was fine. I love butter. Sure so. you do. Hey. In a in a metro region such that we live in where, you know, you expect decor and you expect good service and you expect, you know, a little bit of um, au cuisine, right? You right. know, this is, this is sort of a a step back. The anti she mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a step yes. back, but at the same time, the quality is there, mm -hmm. and you get a lot of food for what you pay for. And um, it's, it's. I think it's something that anybody, sh anybody and everybody should experience at right. least at least once. Okay. And Vivian. I'd say great comfort food. Take your relatives; they'd love it. And Kathy, what about you? Um, I would say don't go for the ambiance. Go for the delicious food. Great. If you would like to try the Basque Cultural Center, it's on Railroad Avenue in South San Francisco. The telephone number is 650-583-8091. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Friday with dinner on weekends and a special family lunch on Sunday. Reservations are recommended and the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. Calling this an elegant interpretation of a classic American steakhouse is an understatement. Kathy's fine dining establishment with some of the best cuts of beef around is splurge worthy. It's located on North Wolf Road in Cupertino at a place called Alexander's Steakhouse. Alexander's Steakhouse is a classic American steakhouse which the uh, obviously the meat is the star. When JC and I opened up the restaurant, we wanted to exceed our guests' experience. We wanted to really provide a five-star experience to our guests, and so we offer you know, dry-aged beef. We always have five prefectures of uh, Japanese Wagyu. Uh, we have caviar, we have foie gras, um, truffles when available. My mother's Japanese, my partner is uh, Asian, so we wanted to be able to use our heritage and influence our, our restaurant as well. And so that really comes through in our cooking. When you walk into the restaurant, you'll see um, short loins there, which we get all the porterhouses, T-bones, bone in New York, bone in fillets. We have a butcher on staff. We pride ourselves on our staff training. Currently, we have uh, 23 sommeliers on our staff. On weekdays, it really is a business clientele. On the weekends, we really get a, a varied mix and more families inside. A lot of people like to bring their children because our our staff is so friendly towards them and takes them into the kitchen to uh, meet the cooks and the pastry chef, make their own cotton candy. All right, Kathy, we're kicking mm -hmm. it up a couple of notches here with yes, Alexander's, we aren't are. we? In we price are. and we are. <laughs> ambiance. Yes. So tell us about Alexander's. Okay. Now, I live in suburbia in uh, near Cupertino and Sunnyvale, South Bay, and there's nothing like it. We just pretty much have your chain restaurants um, and a few mom and pop places along the way. But we don't have anything opulent and exciting. So when we walked into this place that was formerly in El Torito's right. mm. um, in the shopping center, we were amazed because you see the woodwork, yeah. you see the task lighting, you see this beautiful tiled bar in front of you, and you know you're in for a special treat. And when we got there, all the dishes were so ornate, um, the dishware, um, the wait staff, everything, you just feel like a movie star when you mm -hmm. walk in. They treat you like a celebrity, everyone is special. Right. Oh, I was not prepared. <laughs> From the outside, walking in, it was stunning. It's an experience. Yeah. It was yeah, stunning. Yeah. I what think it's got to be the first restaurant I've been to in the whole Bay Area in five years that I have fallen in love with. Oh, my wow. God. I think That's it stands price. up to a San Francisco <clears throat> restaurant or a Beverly Hills or an L.A. Very restaurant. Very Possibly so. 
quality-wise, it was un uh, unreal. I mean, the attention to detail, as you said, um, from the from the steak knife, which had its own special stand, mm -hmm. to the the wait staff who were incredibly knowledgeable. Um, one of the coolest things I thought was, you know, tell us what you like, we can do a prefix for you. So I started out with these hamachi shots, which is basically... Everyone has to have the hamachi yeah. shots. <laughs> yeah, so, awesome. so it's, it's um, hamachi with a little avocado, some um, chili sauce, or a little bit of uh, some kind of citrusy right. sauce, and I think you're supposed to throw it back. Mine, right, they're in little shot glasses. Yeah, mine wasn't exactly falling out of the glass, so I used a spoon to shovel it in my mouth, but still it was, the f I was like, wow, you know, I, it's, it's worth ordering another one. So very few places have Kobe beef. Right. And this has, this restaurant has the high quality Wagyu beef, Kobe right. beef, all different types. And not in from four regions in Japan. Absolutely. Not just they that. also have as well dry aged steaks from the Oh, US. absolutely. So yes. you can get whatever you want, mm -hmm. right? This is, for anybody who's a meat lover, who's a steak lover, mm -hmm. you have got to come experience this. So. Now, what did you have when you were there? Well, I didn't end up having the beef because <laughs> I had <laughs> steak. <laughs> I know, it was horrible. I had steak at lunch. Oh, no. Well, so I was <laughs> staked <prepared>. out. <laughs> I was staked out. Well, I, I wasn't figuring what I walked into. <laughs> and so I ended up having the fish, the sea bass. And I know most people say, what, you went to a steakhouse and had fish? But it looked so good, I just had to have it. Uh -huh. And I also started with a cephalopod salad. Wow. Okay, Sweet. I ordered that Sweet. one okay. just because of the name. Mm -hmm. right. But it was delicious. It was octopus, squid, and the way that they married it with the, with the different julienne vegetables and the mm -hmm. kimchi. It was, I never would have thought of that combination mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Really, a, a lot of the things that I read on the menu, I would have never thought of the combination yeah. of those ingredients on one plate. Again, that Asian yeah. influence that sort of but peeks through and, yes, in the, the menu. experiment well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they and they well. really do an excellent job. But your and fish was good? It was delicious. See, I think that's a sign of a really excellent restaurant when, when well. everything right. is excellent. Yes. Right. I, I and somebody goes to a steak restaurant and has fish. Yeah, and, pulls and it off. still have a great time. Yes. But let's talk steak. Yep. From a steak <coughs> lover here, from a meat lover. Let's yeah. talk steak. So I, um, I, I did go for the, for the Kobe beef. And you did. With the, under, with the premise that, you know, wh when am I going to order Kobe beef again? This is a great opportunity, so I went for it. And, you know, it's not like, eh, this is a little better than a normal steak. It is unequivocally... Uh -huh. Melting your Melt mouth. Melting your mouth. It's, yeah. it's, it's a different experience. They served it with this yes. mushroom compote, and I'm not a big mushroom eater, honestly. It was delicious. They served with a jumbo prawn. I'm not a prawn eater, but I'm just mm. like... Let's let's go for yeah. it. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it all. Let's, have let's, to do it. It. let's do it all. Like, yes. You got the no. shaved truffles. Yeah. Yeah. The whole bit. I, did, I actually didn't get the, sh the shaved truffles, but they had a, uh, a jamón ibérico appetizer, which is mm -hmm. this high-end Spanish cured ham, um, which was you know also a bit pricey. Um, you know, they're kind of trying to sell you. Some people might think that's a little on the on the obnoxious side. Me sort of appreciating that these things are a little unusual was kind of like, okay, this is kind of cool. I see yeah, it you know? as an adventure. Yeah, absolutely. It is an and adventure. And an opportunity to yeah. try something <clears throat> you probably won't find anywhere right. else in the Bay Area. I, I, agreed. Right. And you uh, and you paid a pretty penny for your I steak, did. didn't you? I did. So what they actually do is they give you a certificate showing it. And in fact, I uh, have, <laughs> it, have, have, it, have it right here <laughs> just to show <laughs> you that see. I'm that I'm telling you the truth here. <laughs> the certificate of authenticity. That's right, right there. Th that That's is well. so true. Look they at actually that. do this. Showing the That's location and, and and who to call if there's ever a, ever a problem. <laughs> yeah. and, and it was how much for the steak? That steak was uh, was uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. worth it. But mm -hmm. my prime rib, I'm going back my and prime I'm rib having was it. Not too it was right. $38. But you don't have yeah. to yeah. do that. Exactly. You don't have to do that. Exactly. Right. The, you, right. can, you can do this reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. right. sure. but now, desserts here yeah. are something special as well. We had the um, chocolate sphere, which yeah. is the ooh dessert. You get this um, wedges of dark chocolate cake, and then you get this ball, which is a chocolate shell. And they come and they pour hot fudge Oh, so it's this whole act, you know, and it is wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, Kathy, wh how, how are you going to end this for Alexander's? Well, what I have to say is save your money, mortgage your house if you have <laughs> to, but definitely go to Alexander's Steakhouse. All right, and Ross? Yep, go, uh, go get a home equity loan, get some Kobe <laughs> beef, um, go for the experience, the great wait staff. It's an excellent, uh, excellent overall experience. All right, and Vivian? If you want to try any new restaurant in the Bay Area, I definitely go to that one. All right.
If you would like to try Alexander's Steakhouse, it's on North Wolf Road, off Highway 280 in Cupertino. The telephone number is 408-446-2222. It's open every day for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $75. Well, I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, Vivian Stone, Ross Ritterman, and Kathy Leung. Our first restaurant was Vivian's Pick of Mescolanza. It gave Kathy bragging rights on this great neighborhood place, and Ross felt it a perfect example of good Italian food outside of North Beach. Next was Ross's unusual location of the Bass Cultural Center, which, although criticized for its bland decor, won both Kathy and Vivian over with the food, portions, and value. And finally, Kathy's extravagant pick of Alexander's Steakhouse, where Ross spent a little more than he bargained for, but enjoyed the terrific food and great service. And Vivian can't wait to go back, although she needs a new credit card and maybe a new boyfriend. <laughs> That's it once again. Don't forget to visit our website where you can find photos, recipes, and my notes on the wines we're drinking and enjoying today. On the website, you can also view this and every show or download the podcast. There's also a link to the KQED Wine Club. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers. 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 Prost. Prost. This show is available in high definition, Comcast On Demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check please. A KQED television production.